The following presentation does not represent Australian opinion or intellect. Fake news, folks. Fake news. Are you Muslim? He should have been slapped as a child. He's a spoiled brat. He's probably been treated like a prince. I'm not a criminal. I earned everything I got. You also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Okay, um, this is really surreal. i uh, just like to say, hey. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been shit last time. Last time I did any of this was probably back in January, I think. I don't know. Even with the public service announcements, I'm actually not sure when the last time was. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm back. That's not right. He's back. <laughs> um, yeah, this is really weird. Uh, I probably... I got a lot of messages from people over the last six months saying, where are you guys? You know, what's happening? Haven't heard a podcast in ages. Like, you know, whatever. Um, I think this is really surreal for me. Well, okay, I probably should explain what's been happening. I think life just caught up on everyone. Uh, pod, uh, that's all right, didn't have a house. Yeah, we, we basically just didn't have a place to do it. I'd been talking about it being an issue for ages, you know, that... Um, we're always looking to secure a new location, and yeah, we basically went homeless for six months, and then everyone got stuck with work and life and all that sort of thing, and I just lost speed, basically, to, to do anything about it. I lost energy, really. So, yeah, I don't know how many listeners we actually still have left that were eagerly awaiting our, our return. Maybe we've lost everyone and we're starting again. Either which way, like, I don't know how I feel. I'm actually not fussed. Yeah, the last six months have been massive for, for everyone. And, uh, I mean, I can only speak for myself. The last 10 days have just done a ma- I've just done, I've gone from extreme to extreme, basically. I feel the people that listen to this podcast, they, they've grown to know what, our, what we're all like, you know, as individuals. Um, and when you go, you know, we often, we either skate through stuff, we don't fully elaborate on maybe our personal lives or whatever, which is fair enough. But, you know, when you go missing for six months, I feel like I sort of have to explain a few things. I can only speak for myself. Like, about a year ago, I looked into starting a business. The last four months, I've sort of basically opened shop, if if that makes sense. So that's taken a lot of time. Uh, I was doing it with the intent... I started this business because I was going to be... I knew that I would want to move on from uh, warehousing and, I mean, where I am. And so I had like a, I had a twelve month to twenty four month plan, basically, you know, a year to sort of establish myself, set up the business, and then another year to sort of establish it and make an income out of it, where I didn't have to be doing, you know, another job. And about a week ago, I got news that I will no longer have that job. Uh, it's sort of like a involuntary redundancy. It's it's hard to explain. Basically, I got blindsided. And it's really strange because in the couple of days before that, I made the decision to rent out, to lease out a studio. And that's where I'm actually doing this podcast from now. Uh, that's Not Right has a, a home, a permanent home. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really weird saying it. I've basically furnished this joint in the last 10 days while working a full-time job, while working a full-time, running a full-time business and trying to deal with life. So basically sleeping three hours a night, driving from all, all over Melbourne, either to pick up furniture, see clients, you know, all that sort of stuff. You know, you can throw in a christening in there somewhere. And I took my mum to the theatre about a week ago. Um, so I haven't stopped living, but I basically stopped cooking. I, I stopped sleeping and just kept going. I lived, I've been living on either meals that I've had at functions or rice and tuna and just basically eating as a function and not because I had to, just because I had to. Yeah, it's, it's really weird now that I'm actually looking back at it. And my life's taken a really big turn. Like basically, you know, I mean, I was at employed, you know, in warehousing and logistics for nine years with the same company. And to find out, I assumed I'd probably have about a year left. And then I got told I had 10 days left. So it was a really big blindside. 
But I, for the first time ever, I didn't allow myself to go into panic mode. I was in panic. I was in shock for about, I don't know, three, four hours. I was actually at Bunnings with a mate of mine getting... What was I buying? I was buying something for the studio. Uh, it's, I was putting stuff up for the uh, to soundproof the walls. I think we are buying fasteners and eyelets. I think I was buying an eyelet puncher. So, yeah, I didn't actually allow myself to stay in shock for too long. It's the first time ever where I didn't just regress into, you know, a state of, you know, not depression, but just, you know, mourning and panic and fear because, you know, I mean, I've got a mortgage, I live alone, and then I've just leased a studio, you know, and I'm adding all these uh, numbers to basically money that I'd no longer have that I know I'm going to get. And then over the last week, it's just been a mad struggle to get, you know, furnish this joint, you know, bought it. I mean, if you check out the face here or check out the Insta, you can see yeah, I've got a pretty cool fucking leather couch. It's actually really boss. Yeah, funnily enough, everything in this room sort of came together without trying. The leather, red leather couch, red uh, mini bar. Then I've got like wood grain TV unit, wood grain filing cabinet. I've got my old wood grain speakers. It's really strange. It actually feels like I've been here forever. But um, yeah, obviously I haven't. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I'm only just sort of starting to slow down and take stock of everything that's going on right now. Probably because it's been it's just a week of shell shock and just working through the shell shock. That's that's the same thing. Just being positive. I surrounded myself instead of sort of just dwelling on it, I just basically took it for what it was and threw it out there and just said, Stuff it. Let's let's do this. And for the first time ever, I've actually done something which I never do, and that's lean on people for favors. I pulled every favor I could think of, and th- that was for myself, not for other people, and that's something I've never done. I've never actually looked looked at my situation and said, okay, who do I know that can help me through this? Who do I know that can make a phone call? Who do I know that can speak on my behalf? Who do I know that can help me move something? Who do I know that can do anything? And that's pretty much what I did. I, I called in every favor for people, and people have really stood up. So if anyone's actually listening to this, that listens to that that has been around me for you know forever uh, i just want to say thank you um it's really cool the fact that i now actually have another studio space specifically dedicated to this podcast and i can run it um, i'm running it as a front for my business as well in the uh, in the office space which is pretty cool <laughs> don't know how i'm paying for any of it <laughs> but that'll come it doesn't matter yeah it's i want to say um i've been really you know people ask me about the podcast and everything like you know, when you sort of tell them it's been in hiatus and all that sort of stuff I'm like oh so how long have you been doing it like you know a couple of months i'm like no actually this is the third year that we're in you know last year was really broken but it has been we've been we have been around for three years it's really crazy um it's something i actually like doing you know it's 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 when i used to be able to get my opinion out and be creative with it and again like you know just kick around with my friends and just talk shit and yeah, talk about movies or what's going on. I've had a lot of pent up anger because I haven't been able to lose it. If anyone looks at my personal Instagram account, you'll see um, yeah, my tweets going out sort of every day. My personal Instagram account now has just become a feed of uh, movie, you know, movie moments and just angry Twitter stabs. You know, that's never going to go away. I'm always going to be angry with that sort of shit. You know, what really pissed me off the um the whole Nick Curios thing. I don't, no one even knows about it because it was on TV for literally a minute. Was that Muppet from, um, was it Morning? The one with uh, Richard Wilkins and Sonia Kruger, that fucking gargoyle. Can't remember her name. It's when Curios lost it at his last um, tournament that he had. He, like, trashed a ch- ch- racket or whatever, and he just got ejected from the game, which is standard. You know, Nick is Nick, but um, I'm not defending his actions like he's a muppet for doing that but what i am defending is that mole that came out on tv and said that he was a a spoiled greek brat who probably should have been hit as a child and you know uh, probably gets treated like a prince that was on national tv and that really fucking angered me you know i've actually included that sample in the um in the new opening theme for for the podcast because i feel it didn't get any attention at all it was just washed over just washed over. I mean, imagine if, you know, Nick Kyrgios wasn't Nick Kyrgios and he was, you know, Magic Door or something from from North. Imagine if he wasn't Nick Kyrgios and, and someone called Magic Door a spoiled little Sudanese brat who should have been hit as a child. That would have been fucking outrage. But because it's Nick Kyrgios, it's okay for this white woman to, to say it on TV. 
and they just ignored it. But how how does that fly? And then, of course, we just get distracted, you know, with the next big thing. Forget Robert Mueller and his report. Forget everything that they found. Forget, you know, the abortion thing in Alabama. Now all the redneck states are falling in line. Forget all that. You know, that, 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 that's not even a pressing matter. You know, it doesn't... <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's actually, it's infuriating. You know, when I look at my notes that I sort of keep collating for thinking I'm going to do a podcast, I'm going to do a podcast, and eventually it doesn't happen. All these angry sort of things just keep festering, and I don't understand it. And that thing with Nick Kyrgios really, really fucking pissed me off. Pre-election. Like, was it pre-election? I don't even remember. I feel like the elections came and went, and no one even heard about it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like Carlton getting beaten every week. You know, I was. what was I doing on Sunday? I don't even remember what I was doing on Sunday. I was running around with something. And then I was sitting on my computer doing work. And I checked, like, the paper or news.com or something. I checked something and, oh, yeah, Carlton demoralized in against Essendon. Next day, Bolton sacked. I'm like, I didn't even notice. I've had too much shit going on with myself. And I didn't even pick up on that whereas you know a couple of years ago that probably would have been a big thing for me you know what and that's the thing like talking to like i mean going for job interviews for the first time in over you know 10 years actually longer than that it's probably been longer than that since i actually had a proper proper interview um going to all these interviews and taking on these things people are sort of amazed at my resume i think there's nothing to it i think it's just crap you know but depend you know it all changes like i mean people have been saying like in prospective employers and stuff have been saying to me what do you expect to be paid and I, I tell them and they're like look we can definitely find you work yada 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 and i said you know it's more the respect thing i mean when i where i've worked for like the last decade you become institutionalized like literally you become institutionalized as if you're coming out of a prison you're made to believe that you're only worth this much and whatever they tell you and based on the severity of your own circumstances or, you know, the dependency on a solid paycheck and routine just to keep the, the lights on and to keep people fed. That's what happens, you know, and that, that in a nutshell is why, you know, middle class, upper middle class people and uh, all that sort of stuff, they say, you know, why don't you just get a better job? Or why don't you just get a better job? So because you fear that you can't because you're made to believe that there are no jobs out there. But I'll tell you what, one of the best feelings I had, despite how low I was, I mean, I got my... Walking papers served to me on Tuesday afternoon, so a week ago. Wednesday was a day off, and I literally spent it just doing stuff for the, uh, for the podcast, setting up the room, sending resumes out, cover letters, just taking stock of how much money I would have and when it would run out give, if I was not able to get a job, all that sort of stuff, you know. I went to work on Thursday, and I walked out of it. I finished my shift at 10 a.m. I looked at my phone, and I had four or five messages, four or five missed calls, voicemails, all from prospective employment agencies, all offering me work. You know, different rates of pay, different roles, but they were all there. And that, that was, you know, it wasn't validating, but it was a vote of confidence that, hey, maybe I am not just garbage. Maybe I do have actual ability, you know, that someone might actually value. Anyway, I'm moving forward. As far as personally, I'm moving forward with another role. Well, I'm looking to move forward with another role, a few different roles that I've actually looked at away from warehousing. And it sort of opened my eyes to say, hey, you do have skills that have the ability to transfer over, but you just don't know. A lot of the times there are jobs out there that you don't know exist, but you are more than capable of doing, you know, given the chance you can actually learn. And I'm starting to understand that, but it is it is weird coming from a place of being institutionalized like a prison. Like in Shawshank when, uh, what was his name? The old guy that... that tops himself off he basically they'd say that he's getting free tries to hold someone hostage what was his name um brooks his name was brooks yeah i just um yeah brooks he, he basically serves his entire life in prison then there's word that he's going to get out he tries to take someone hostage or kill him you know, extend his sentence he gets let out and he's just lost there's a world that you know has changed around him everything's changed and just falls into depression basically because he doesn't have any point you know he's no nothing else and he tops himself off i'm sure morgan freeman's character is on the verge of doing that as well when he gets out and spoiler alert for anyone that hasn't watched shawshank redemption <laughs> man i remember when i was in high school like that movie would come on you'd see it and it'd be halfway through the first scene where um andy enters the prison 
or starts getting, you know, uh, raped by the uh, sisters. And you're just forced to watch it from that point on. <laughs> we'd, we'd all go to school the next day. It's, it was that movie and it was True Lies. Every time True Lies would come on, you were just forced to watch it. You'd be falling asleep when, uh, is it Elijah Dushku? I can't remember. Is that her name? Like, I don't even know who I'm asking. It was, yeah, she's on the, uh, that big crane thing about to get taken out. And you're falling asleep at that point, but you're like, hang on, I'm going to watch this. Jamie Lee Curtis is hanging from like that speeding car. T. Carrera's, you know, grabbing a rack. I can't remember. Good movies. <laughs> no, but anyway, yeah, it's just that breaking out of that chain. I'm not saying I'm, I'm okay now. I'm not saying I'm saved. In fact, you know, I haven't really actually digested the fact that I'll be moving on from this place that I was at for, for a decade. But, you know, change is change. You know, and change is inevitable. Nothing stays the same forever. It doesn't matter what you do. Now, I'm, I'm starting to... Yeah, I always banked on that. I always banked as a kid, especially as a kid. I banked on having my friends forever. I banked on having, you know, just the status quo. But my life has never been the same ever. It's I've, rather than, and that's the thing. Rather than surviving, I'd rather, I'm for the first time ever. I'm actually taking, I'm making a measured, not even a calculated, um, not even a, a calculated. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Risk. It's not even a calculated risk. It's it's an investment. I invested a year ago in this business for myself, and now I'm investing in myself, period, to try and get forward. Because rather than be behind the ball, I'd rather be in front of it. I know, it's weird. I think it's just all the distractions, you know, that keep coming up that are going to set you back. You know what really, fuck, this happened like, when was this? Was this mid-election? Mid-election week, maybe during the whole Nick Curios thing? I can't remember. I would get snippets of, like, the local media and stuff. And I would, I would hear this about Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is ending. I heard more about Game of Thrones ending than I did about the, the election. And um, everyone around me was like closet Game of Thrones fans or like diehard fanboys just coming out, the best show ever. And to this day, I still don't know why. I ask everyone, why is Game of Thrones the best show ever? Because it just is. Well, what's good about it? It just is. You need to watch it to understand. Yeah, I haven't got time for that. <laughs> I don't trust cereal boxes when I pull them off the, uh, the shelf. You know, you pick up a cereal box, you look at it, the graphic doesn't appeal to you. Like, nah, this has got cashews in it. This has got, you know, uh, <laughs> what's that other one? Pomegranate or chia seeds. And then you try and convince yourself to buy a cereal just based on the fact that it has, you know, something half delicious in it. But then you think about the chia seeds. And then usually you end up buying it. And it's usually some organic shit that costs like $8 a box, get like two bowls out of. You take one bite and you crack it because <laughs> you've got chia seeds in your teeth. Um, yeah, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Do you know what really pissed me off? The fact that it ended and no one was happy with the ending because it was rushed. And I said, that's great. But the thing that made me laugh the most was the fact that people were calling for the last season to be reshot. It's like, you, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't take a work of fiction, produce it, and then just reshoot it because you weren't, the, the fans weren't happy with how it ended. I mean, you get all the Marvel Universe sort of stuff now and it's like you know i mean i watched the last avengers movie i think it was a decent way to finish the series even though i'm not a fan of comic book movies and all that sort of stuff but i'll watch it you know as a just a thing to do at the movies i'll watch it and it was good it was entertaining it was nice to bring it full circle and closure probably went for a bit too long could have done away with a lot of stuff in the middle but the whole point was now they're talking about you know the, the rebooting the series recasting and telling the other story or telling the same story different like why and that infuriates me as an artist because, I mean, even as a music producer when I was a kid, I could never understand why people would continually sample song after song after song. You know, sampling is when you take an old song and rework it or interpolate like a chorus or a hook or a melody or something. You know, when you hear a song on the radio, especially now, like millennials would be hearing it. Millennials would understand that now. You know, the Gen X's and Gen Y's, they would have understood it 10 years ago, 15 years ago. When, when sampling really sort of took off in the mid-80s, early 90s, mid-90s. You know, in certain genres, it's more prevalent than the others. Like hip-hop relied on sampling. You know, where now popular music is all just sampling. And they're just covering songs, so they just sample them. It really infuriated me on the fact that there were so many millions of artists out there dying to get a look at, you know, dying to get their foot in the door somewhere, dying to be recognized as, you know, whether it's a painter, a musician, a graphic designer, or a fashion designer, whatever it is, a poet... 
and we're just rehashing the old shit. It's kind of like the curse of the WWE, like the wrestling. The WWE is stuck in this nostalgia. Nostalgia. W, wrestling fans love nostalgia. They love revisiting the past. But the problem is, Ric Flair is 85 years old, and he literally can't stand anymore. You know? But they still drag him out for one more match. It was the same as when I saw The Undertaker last year. Was it last year? This year? I, I think it was at the start of this year. I can't even remember. It was warm. Um... It was sad watching him. I grew up watching The Undertaker being this dominant force of, of wrestling, and then he's just this old dude that can barely swing a punch, and they're just dragging it out. Man, just bury it. <laughs> bury The Undertaker. Okay. Anyway, but that's what pissed me off, like with the Game of Thrones thing, demanding that it's reshot. Don't you people have anything else to do? Seriously. You, like, don't you have anything else to demand? Demand equal rights for the, your, your fellow human beings. You know, demand industrial revolution. Demand water for everyone as a as a. It's a human right. Like, water for everyone is a human right. Demand that. No, we demand that Game of Thrones be reshot. I can't live. And what? <laughs> First world problems, man. Like, seriously. You want to demand something. Demand no more versions of the Bible. And everyone's interpolation of that shit. Organized religion. Everyone rehashes that idea. You see how well that's worked out? <laughs> seriously? Speaking of which, George Pell is fighting for his life. Man, what happened with that? Seriously, what happened with that? <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, yeah, the last uh, six months have been a real sort of grind period for me as far as investing in myself and reassessing what's important and all that sort of thing. Um, Self-reflection, all that sort of shit. You know, trying to be more understanding, show more patience and all that sort of... I don't know. I, I'm sort of rambling, yeah, as you all know. But um, I... <laughs> I'm starting to realize there's so many people out there are fucking assholes. And unless they've been told, they'll just keep being assholes. Period. And it really shits me. This cuntish behavior really, really pisses me off. I went to uh, Mr. Minute the other day. Um, the keys in my, my freaking, what's it called? My, um, my fob for my car. The batteries had died. One of them had died. The other one hadn't let me in my car. I just went to Mr. Minute and changed the batteries just to see what would happen. And the guy, Mr. Minute, man, like around the corner from my house, is really nice. He, um, I took a pair of dress shoes there the other day to get sort of stretched out a bit because there are no half sizes in men's, you know, formal wear shoes. Anyway, irrelevant. I'm just standing there waiting to be served, and there was this woman in front of me. I'm pretty sure she's an old, she's Greek. I've seen her around the, like the, the traps, you know, over the last, you know, six years that I've been there. And um, she was cracking the shit because her fob wouldn't work. And the guy's like, and she's like, yeah, I changed it. Barely had like a grasp on the English language. But I remember seeing her with her daughter, I think it was, or someone related to her. And they had really Australianized accents. So it's not like she just came from overseas. She was obviously just someone that stayed ignorant in her own two cents. And she wasn't, you know, senile or geriatric like. She was probably like, you know, early 60s anyway point being is um yeah she's cracking the shits because her fob wasn't working and the guy said you know you brought it back she's like i came here last week you changed my battery or whatever and now it's not working fix it it's like all right so this guy takes it apart and he says look it goes rust she says what he goes you got rust on this fob you've you've whatever you wherever you're leaving these keys they've got water in them so it's just, the rust has drained the battery. It's going to drain it prematurely. You did that. He says, I didn't do it. Rust doesn't take a week to sit in. Rust takes years, you know, to get to that degree. No, you did that. It's like, I didn't do it. I changed your battery. He's like, we'll change the battery. Fix it. He's like, well, look, I could put a new battery in. And he was being completely calm. And he goes, I could put a new battery in, but it's just with this rust, you know, wherever you're leaving your keys, wherever water got into it, it's just going to eat the battery up and it'd be dead in another week. It'd be back here again. Well, you did that. You put water in. It's like, I'm in a workshop in a shopping center. There is no water here. I didn't do it. Russ takes it. And she just kept cracking it. And he's like, well, and he said, look, I, 
I can order a new fob for you. You know, you can go to your car dealer and get it yourself. I can do it as well. It's going to cost a bit. How much? It's like, well, what car is it? It's a, like a Jeep Cherokee. Like it wasn't something cheap, you know. And she's just mumbling the entire time. He, like he's looking up in his, you know, index thing. Like he's looking at his folders. Like gone through the things. The entire time she's just babbling to herself. Like, you know, this self-righteous, arrogant annoyance. I'm like, oh, man. And he's like, look, it's going to cost two things. He's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. put the battery back in. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, he's like, yeah, do whatever you got to do. You know, but you need to get this fixed. Otherwise, it's you just can get the same result. Oh, money and blah, blah, blah. It's like you drive a cheap Cherokee and you're complaining about it, you know, hundred $100 fob or whatever the hell it is because you fucked it up. She went away and I just, he just looked at me. He's like, hey, mate. And I just looked at him. I said, mate, I go, you're a bigger man than I am. And he just smiled. He said, look, yeah, sometimes you just got to deal with it. It is what it is. And I said, man. I could never, I could never work here. I'm not taking away from your job. Like, it, you know, job's a job. It's no pride in honest work, but I could never work in this environment because I would literally be telling everyone to go stick it up their ass. Anyway, I don't actually know why I went into that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have much to say outside of what I've already said so far. I want to say thank you to to Nick. Bobby, Aurora, Alex, Arthur, uh, Johnny, like everyone, everyone that's sort of had a role to play in this podcast since we created it. Uh, this is a new sort of page, I guess. I mean, I, I don't actually know how to, I mean, it's it's the first time I feel, I feel secure where we are, where it's actually being held for one, probably because there's a lock and key. 24-hour access, and, you know, it's, it's an actual studio. I still have a bit of work here to do as far as soundproofing it. I've done a bit, but I want to thank everyone that's actually helped me put it together, you know. Um, I've had to, yeah, like, I've had to call in a lot of favours from a lot of people. I think someday I'm going to have to do, like, a thank you, thank you dinner or something. Um, but, yeah, that that really means a lot. It's really nice to know when you have friends that can, you can actually rely on and they pull through because they want to see you do well with whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, I want to thank everyone that's listening, everyone that listens to this podcast, and even after a six month hiatus, they still they're still knocking on the door and saying, you know, that was a big part of you know your life. You know, it was something they enjoyed and they want to see more. So that really means a lot. Um. It's strange, like for the first time, over the last 12 months basically, 12 to maybe two, 18 months, it's the first time I've ever had mentors, mentors that I actually trusted, mentors that were established, mentors that wanted me to achieve something for no, no personal gain of their own, and that was a big thing. Um, the fact that I worked for nine years in a company where I never was actually mentored, I was never mentored for anything, and um, I was just treated as a number, an expendable number. Yeah, you know, again, it's that institutionalization, you know, regressing into shit and just basically settling for the bare minimum just because you feel that's what you deserve. And it's like, nah, fuck that. Um, as far as this podcast goes, I have an idea of where I want it to go. Again, everyone's welcome anyone's welcome like it's always been you know it's an open forum anyone can put their hand up and come in and have a chat um i've just got to figure out a way to make money <laughs> i was thinking of starting a, like a gofundme page basically to help finance this but i've been i'm happy to run it at a loss just to keep it going i don't want to i don't plan to but um there are production costs now as in there always has been, it's usually been just my labor, you know, which I bill myself, but now there are actual production costs and people, well, not people, I need to remind myself of that because there's only so much you can actually sacrifice. Um, I hope this becomes a platform that everyone can gain access to. You know, I want it to be like everyone has... Everyone has a story. Not everyone has to be listened to, though. But some stories need to be listened to. Some people need to be heard. And I think that was a big thing about this. Because a lot of times when we discuss issues and stuff like that, you know, we're always constantly sort of filling each other in on, on stuff that's going on around the world. 
and you know that we have no idea about and i think there's a lot of that in melbourne in everyone's backyard but i mean i don't think we touch base with that enough you know i explained some i mean even just with me i explained some of the stuff that i dealt with as a as an employee you know within a casual agency that's been long term at some joint and people like it sounds like a, a prison i'm like yeah you feel like that you explain the working conditions and you know money's money but at the same time can't put a price on dignity can't put a price on respect and i think yeah everyone's story need, i need to get every everything out so yeah i don't think i actually have much more to say right now it's going to still be a work in progress I, i'm not sure when the next episode will come hopefully sooner than later again like a big thank you to everyone that supported this thing to everyone that's been involved in it you know um it's been a learning curve i don't claim to be an expert on anything i just want to keep producing content that people want to hear actually not even content that people want to hear i want to produce content that i'm happy with and i want it all to be for progress i want to be progress i want to be moving forward with everything yeah there's no more turnstile sort of mentality and that's the thing like when you say you work in a warehouse you know there's usually a turnstile at the front gate and it's just like revolving door that's all it is you go in go out go in go out you know life is gonna be more than about just turnstiles you know you got to live a life worth remembering i'm not saying you know go do a streaker job like uh, that bird did for uh, vitali what's his name that sells the energy drinks and makes the pornos that was insane first of all they're calling it a streaker she was wearing a bathing suit it was a high cut bathing suit but it was a bathing suit <laughs> if she did that at the beach no one would care it's like hey look at that blonde that's the end of it <laughs> she did she ran onto a field she ran to a soccer final to get exposure <laughs> she ran she ran onto the field and they're calling her a streaker i didn't see any nudity <laughs> you can't call her a streaker call her a uh what was that guy that peter what's his name that used to interrupt like the tennis and stuff a pest a serial pest <laughs> oh, that annoys me I mean, everyone got short changed with that that title seriously and the funniest thing is is oh my god <laughs> i read about it this morning she's run onto the field and she did it like like i said she did it to um uh what's it called uh, get get exposure for a boyfriend that uh russian american dude who makes pornos and energy drinks or whatever the hell it is he's just one of the he's an instagram instagram profile uh, you know profile that you know has like three million views no one actually knows why and it's just them women in bikinis fast cars you know living that life standard shit um but then yeah he's misses that kinsey Wolanski, whatever her name was yeah um <laughs> It's like you read the article, it's like the X-rated prankster who pulled off her biggest stunt so far by streaking during the Champions League final. Dude, she ran across a football field. The funniest part is I remember being I remember being at the footy years, years ago and just seeing this dude, Like I think it was Carlton Collingwood. I'm pretty sure it was Carlton Collingwood because we won and that was the last winning game I'd seen. This this guy, this drunk guy, ran from the the stands and ran into the field. Got tackled by cops and you know the security, and he's come back and everyone's like cheering him on. No one called him a, a prankster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or the biggest stunt he ever pulled? He just ran onto a field, and then yeah, she's um this woman, Kinsey, whatever. She said. Uh, <laughs> You know, it, the whole thing backfired because Instagram got hacked and her account got wiped out, like it got deactivated, you know, all for nothing. I'm like, wait a second, man. If your bread and butter is coming from Instagram, then you have serious issues. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you know, like, I see that all the time with these, um, like either, you know, softcore models or influencers that you see on social media and it's like my account's been taken down i'm relying on this for a living it's like do you get a job you created a job by milking a platform 
that didn't exist, you know, 10 years ago. <laughs> you know? And imagine, like, what... <laughs> Can you imagine, like, what are, like an ethnic family? Can you imagine, like, some child telling his old man that he wants to be an influencer on Insta- Instagram? Or he says, you know, he's finished uni, he didn't even go to uni. He's like, you're not going to go, what are you going to do? It's like, oh, I'm going to be an influencer. And he tells his old man that his life is over because his Instagram got hacked or taken down because he put up a photo of, like, a nipple. A woman's nipple, sorry, not a man's nipple. A woman's nipple or a man's testicle or something gets shut down. It's like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, my life is over. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mate, I got, I got the numbers of a few job agencies you can call, uh, Kinsey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Without the Instagram, she wouldn't be famous. She wouldn't be a model. She wouldn't be anything. <laughs> She'd be a civilian living a normal life. Yeah, not an influencer. Yeah, I've got a lot of people in my life that I look up to, people that I admire, and none of them are are Instagram heavy. You know, 60 billion followers. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) What a joke. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, look, I'll leave it there because I'm really just going to keep going around and around in circles. Um, Actually, looking around, I need to come up with a name for this joint. I don't know what I'm going to call it. Is it a rat's nest or <laughs> something? I think the rat's nest is probably good or ground control or something. I don't know. It'll come organically. I don't want to put a label on it. I've got some ideas for some pretty cool decals and shit that I'm going to put up, which is pretty cool. That's nice. It's just nice to actually have this place now. The sad part is, is I'm looking around. I'm seeing a lot of stuff from my childhood. Like, I've got my TV that I bought in 2009 when I got back from Thailand. I've got... My old stereo that I had since I was since ninety seven. My mom, when she bought it for me, it was worth like a mint. She said she had to put it on lay by for ages. She she saw it in the paper when it got released as being at the top of the game. It was my first stereo, and I, I've done nearly all my media work on it up until you know when I moved into my studio and bought actual gear. You know, yeah, the old old um, big fucking speakers. This old mirror that used to be in my mum's house. Um. Yeah, it's like old and new, it's sort of an old and old, new and familiar. You know, I've got the chairs that we have in this um, in the studio now. They're they're actually my mum's old dining chairs that I had growing up as a kid. They're solid, solid framework, solid. Ah, oh, it's just crazy. But then you know, I've got, I'm using a Mac to record this crap, which I never do. Got the round table that we've always had for this podcast. This fucking red leather couch, it looks sick. I'm actually dying to sit on it. I actually haven't sat on that couch, but got my TV set up. I'm gonna get my Mega Drive. And just sit down and chill. I think this would be like my home away from home. But there's no oxygen in here. I'm probably going to end up dying. <laughs> Find me passed out on the floor <laughs> on the last level of NBA Live or something. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, good to be back. Please send in any suggestions, ideas, you know, requests, anything. You know, as always, this is ext- we're all, this is going to be an extremely approachable platform. Anyone that wants a voice, anyone that wants to discuss something, anyone that just wants to come here and debate, I, I really don't give a shit. I'm happy to have anyone, as long as your intentions aren't for malice. You know, like come in here and walk out with my TV or <laughs> you know all that sort of shit. But um, yeah, no, nah, it's good to be back, and it's been too long, and hopefully, not hopefully, but I want to make this a as, as frequent as possible, and I don't see why not. Especially if I get a job uh, now that, like, um, I mean, the jobs that I've been fielding, there's jobs and there's careers. You know, Chris Rock had a really good um, analogy with that sort of stuff. He had a good bit about uh, jobs and careers, you know. People who have careers don't care about jobs. They don't understand them. People that have jobs don't want jobs. They want a career. You know, it's not the same. You know, in a job, you have set hours, 10 minutes for smoko, you know, half an hour for lunch that you have to pay for, all that sort of stuff. It's a really good bit. I'll see if I can find it and I'll share it on um, on Facey or something. But again, like always, you know, like, share, follow and subscribe. I know you haven't had anything to like, share, follow or subscribe to, but I really am going to try. Once I get my next sort of leg sorted out, once I get the next step sorted out, I'm really going to try to make it a recurring thing. To make it an ongoing thing. That works for everyone. Anyway, cool. Um, Peace out.